Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, and I'll be uh, giving a commentary for the second day of the Meijin title match, uh, first game. So this is how far the game came, uh, went yesterday, and this invasion was the um, sealed move, which was played by Yama, or sealed by Yama last night and opened this morning. And this move was expected, and it seems that Cho also expected this move because he was fairly quick in playing his answer on the second line here. Black bumped against white, and this starts a very, um, what could be a decisive fight here. Um, white cannot back off, but also black is trying to attack the whole white group. Um, when white does extend down here, it's not good for black to try to cut white off because if black does so, uh, for instance, if black plays something like this, white would already be winning this, this fight to capture um, by one move. So there's a one move difference here in any case if what black tries to cut white off. So black connects in the center and white gets to connect underneath. And then black jumps here. So this is an important move that uh, loosely connects the entire black group. And now white played the most sharp variation by playing this uh, hanging connection to start a ko on the third line. So this ko is going to be very important because both sides stand a lot, lose a lot of territory in the trade that will happen with this ko. So another way, a less direct ko that white could have played would be taking immediately which would again threaten to cut here or, um, well, usually to cut, cut here with the next move. Um, so if black answered with something like this, this would be a relatively peaceful trade in which white would be getting um, to connect underneath. But in the game, white played the sharpest variation, playing the hanging connection and taking the call. Um, but with this ko, uh, black does have some local co-threats. So black's co you could say that black's co-threats are easier to find, while white's co-threats are actually a bit difficult. White found a co-threat here, which is forcing. Black has this co-threat. White peeped. And black still has a lot of choices. Um, let's see, where did black play? Black played the Atari here. And white throws in here. So this was a very interesting move, it's an exciting move that um, made the game much more complicated at this point. Um, obviously, if black just connects the coal, White can push through here and capture the three stones. So this would be uh, fairly good for White in that these two black stones also are um, in a lack of liberty, so White has some cutting moves here to look at later. And of course, White's group would be alive. So this would be reasonable for White. And uh, instead of connecting the ko, Black started this ko, made it a bigger ko. So compared to connecting here and then cutting later, in which case white would get an Atari here to fix the shape in the corner, if black can cut here and finish the ko with this move, there's much more damage done to white in the corner when black can attack here with the next move. So that would be a much more severe attack against white than in the case where white gets an Atari here with Sente and has a living shape. So that's the idea behind this move. But of course, when black plays here, the ko is going to continue. So uh, now black uses this co-threat. Um, and if white connects here, black can take here. If white pushes through, um, then this is dangerous because um, white's going to lose this group here. It's more than dangerous. So um, white would be continuing maybe with a cut here, or an Antari here first, and then maybe a cut, to capture these two black stones. But black would be able to um, add a move on the outside and have an attack on white um, in, the, in the upper right area. So this would be playable for black.
so when black throws in, when black throws in here, white again played a very sharp move with this. So this is um, a probe to see how black reacts. If black plays from the outside, white will have uh, this push with sente. So that would be good for white. So black answers the connection. Um, and then white, uh, let's see. I think we've caught up with the game now. Let's see, if, uh, that was the last move there. Um, white has a choice of connecting the ko or taking a stone. Um, if he takes a stone, then the next move would be probably to play an Atari here, making use of that cut to make it more forceful. Um, so this is how the game could continue. Um, so white has basically prepared another co threat here. So in this point of the game, the white group um, in the upper right here is not completely alive yet, and it depends on this ko or the trade um, starting with that ko. Black's group is not um, settled yet. If black can win the ko, of course, black will be settled. Otherwise, black has to make a solid position in the center. If we have white breaking through here later in the game, then this black group in the upper side, that group also could become um, put in danger. And the cutting, when white wants to cut this group off, white will be playing a hane here, which then will have some um, follow-up um, moves against the corner, which will make the corner a small life. So there's a number of groups that will be um, involved in this fight that is developing in, in the right side of the board. I think it's probably going to be the decisive fight of this game.